Throughout the years of playing Monster Hunter, the game has introduced a wide variety of mechanics varying from the movesets of the weapons, the ways of upgrading the armor, the way hunters would be collecting materials, the environment, and much more. Although there's an old mechanic in Monster Hunter that hasn't been around for a long time, the changing of seasons. A few months ago, I decided to go back and play some of the old Monster Hunter games just to see how the game was back then. The oldest game I was able to play was Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. It is also my first Monster Hunter game, but I've heard about how this game has a completely different experience from the other second gen game. That other game is called Monster Hunter Dose. Let's call it Monster Hunter 2 in this video. And because it has a different experience, I want to give it a shot. So I gave Monster Hunter 2 a try. In the beginning of the game, I was met with the usual stuff. You enter the village, the village chief asks you to help them out, you've got nothing going on in your life and you don't want to be a loser, so you decided to help out the Jumbo Village. That's my character's headcanon, but moving on from that, I was met with an even bigger surprise this game has. Time matters a lot in this game. Unlike modern Monster Hunter games where it's for aesthetics or whatnot, this game puts a deep emphasis on preparation. You... you know what, let's just... In Monster Hunter 2, there's only three seasons cycled in-game. We have the cold season, the warm season, and lastly, the breeding season. Now what's interesting about these three seasons right here, during the warm season, you wouldn't be able to take on quests in the desert due to the extreme heat. Of course, would you really want to burn yourself in the heat of the summer? Trust me, as an introvert tropical boy myself, you won't like it. Now, during the colder seasons, it is the exact opposite of the warmer season. You wouldn't be able to hunt in colder areas, such as the snowy mountains, due to the extreme cold temperature. But there's an exemption on that. These two areas, like the desert and snowy mountains, both of which would only be accessible whether it is a cold or warm season if you're about to take on an urgent quest. Lastly, we have the breeding season. During this season, some of the monsters are less active because you know how it is. What's great about this season is while some of the monsters are gone, it's a good time to gather some of the materials you've been missing for the past two seasons. Because you're a lazy hunter who relies on farms and Argosy- Oh wait, um, that's also me. But yes, it's a good time to gather those like honey, bugs, ores, the ones you don't have in stock. Also, all of the maps are available to explore during this season. Speaking of gathering materials, seasons also affect which gathering spots that are available during that time period. For example, there was one time I was planning to collect some honey during the cold season. After arriving at the beehive, I kept getting insect husk and kutku scales with little to no honey. This was the same with other beehives. However, during the warm season, it is the exact opposite. As you can see, honey is so abundant during the warm season. Also, Unlike the newer Monster Hunter games that allow you to collect wyvern eggs at any time, you can only get wyvern eggs during the breeding season. In my opinion, it's these little details that make season's mechanic a bit more interesting. Oh yeah, just a side note, any of these three seasons wouldn't change if you're in mid-quest. It would only change once you get back in the village. You can also skip the day and night or the entire season if you go to sleep although there's just a cost to that. The season cycle also play a role on what quests you can only take on during that season you are in. Each season cycle has its own quest pool. Some monsters will only have quest-specific locales during that certain season. For example, during the warm season, you can hunt down Velocidrome in the jungle area, However, as soon as the warm season changes into cold season, some monsters typically hibernate. One of them is Velocidrome. The monster will then disappear and you'll be getting a different quest pool. 
Basically, you wouldn't be able to hunt Velocidrome in that current season. But when it reaches into a breeding season, the quest pool changes and Velocidrome will reappear again. Another thing about the season cycle mechanic, it also affects small monsters in the area. Every season, small monsters in the area would decrease in quantity or increase. Some small monsters would increase in size. For example, during the warmer season, there would be less Velociprey in the jungle area. While as during the breeding season, there would be more Velocipreys. And another example is, during the warmer season, Vespoids are bigger in size than usual. NPCs will even give you hints on when certain monsters would appear. Okay, let's pause for a second. So, how are you feeling about this mechanic so far? You good? The monster's level of difficulty would vary depending on their preferred season and time of the day. A quick example of this is Rathians. They are more likely to be stronger during the daytime of the breeding season. And in perspective, if you were to hunt the monster like Rathian during its preferred season and time of the day, you can expect that the difficulty level can be similar to that of hunting a high rank monster with a low rank equipment. Yes, I know, that's a bit crazy, and you definitely would want to avoid that situation. And as you can see, it really goes to show that the devs want you to pay attention, slow down, and plan your upcoming hunt. But you might be asking yourself, well Maki, how would I be able to tell if the monster is likely to be strong during that time of the day and season? For some of you, of course, this may sound super tricky to do, but don't worry, there's a translated spreadsheet guide created by Lutai Ranis. The chart is based on the official guidebook that shows whether or not the monster will be strong or weak. The link will be added in the description of this video. You know, besides monster difficulty, food recipes also has a different effects every season cycle. I didn't know about this until like one time my hunter suddenly passed out after eating the same meal last season. Well, this is what happens when I just get used to eating only one or two food recipes in. But the way it works is basically every season, each food combination will give your hunter different effects. Some of these effects would result in either a positive or a negative way. For example, during the warm season, if I were to take the food recipe of this thing right here, by combining sliced cactus and rice bug, my hunter would receive a positive health buff of plus 10 and a stamina increase of plus 25. Okay, cool. That's a decent buff right there. However, during the cold season, if I were to take that same food recipe again, this time, my hunter would receive a negative health debuff of minus 10, but the same positive stamina increase of plus 25. I know, it can be a bit tricky sometimes, especially if you're used to the newer Monster Hunter games where the buff is just usually the same, right? Now there's actually a useful table that I found online outlining every combination of the recipe plus the effects it provides. I really thank the person who made this, I'll just add it in the description. Mm, one more thing about the season cycle. Every season, NPCs would also have like special requests for you. These seasonal quests, more often than not, these NPCs would be asking you if you could give them some monster materials that are typically scarce during that season you're in. And in exchange for these requests, they'll reward you with a good amount of money. The season cycle isn't only part of the offline village, but it also affects the online aspect of the game. Back when Capcom servers were still up for Monster Hunter 2, days and nights go by 50 minutes each, and the seasons would change every 15 full day and night cycles. In other words, that's 25 hours of playtime. Also, even if the servers are empty, time would still continue to flow. For more info about the online mode, check out the video created by MH United.
as of this recording, the season cycle mechanic hasn't returned since then, and probably never will. The early days of Monster Hunter Frontier had it, but as the game was updated over time, the season cycle barely had any effect on the game in the end. The only mechanics that's close to the season cycle that was added in the future Monster Hunter titles would be the day and night cycle and some changes in the weather, both of which play a minimal role. It's only for endemic life in game, unlike before in the second generation of Monster Hunter. Like I said in the beginning, this mechanic may not be for everyone. It's layers and layers and layers of preparation before hunting the monster, preparing all the materials or supplies needed for the upcoming hunt, preparing the best food combination on that season, preparing the right season and time to take on the monster. Overall, it's layers of preparation that advantageously rewards you before hunting the monster. I personally find this thorough mechanic amazing in Monster Hunter. It reminds me of the early days with my friends. We would gather in my house after school, and we would play Freedom Unite in the PSP. So nostalgic. My friend would have his scuff research notes printed and on his crumpled It would have like the taking on the quest, and we would the cycle through the stuff. As of this recording, it's now a relic of the past. A profound mechanic in Monster Hunter that we'll never get to experience ever again. What a night, people da- wait, wait, wait. Don't go just yet. Let's not end with a gloomy ending. Because I've got some exciting update to share with you. As of lately, Monster Hunter Old School are making great progress on creating a private server for Monster Hunter 2. And if you ever decide to try out Monster Hunter 2 after watching this video, I really recommend checking out their Discord server. I'd say it's a great place to start in terms of figuring out what you need to do to play. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.